House members are debating a bill that would add a citizenship question to the U.S. Census in 2030 and exclude non-citizens from counting towards the population used to determine the allocation of congressional representatives. Predictably, MAGA Republicans are coming in hot and stupid. It is past time we put America and Americans first. Joe Biden and his regime are shelling out benefits to illegal immigrants like Oprah Winfrey on her show. Everyone gets a vote. Everyone gets recognized, even if you're here illegally. In New York, aliens are receiving $53 million in free prepaid debit cards. In Denver, Colorado, aliens get six free months of housing. And now they want to hand them seats in Congress to buy their lifelong allegiance to the Democrat Party. There are now at least 16.8 million illegal aliens living in the United States, enough to account for roughly 22 seats in the House of Representatives, including these aliens in the apportionment of congressional districts, impacts representation in Congress, and undermines the constitutional principle of one person one vote. Americans deserve to have their voices fully represented, not diluted by illegal aliens. The gentleman reserves, the gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Uh, thank you kindly, and uh, it's always uh, delightful to hear my friend from Colorado speak. One thing that I do want to point out, however, because there might be some students uh, in the gallery today, um, is that there can be no illegal aliens and there can be no green card holders in Congress because the Constitution very clearly specifies that you must have been a citizen for seven years before you run for the House and you must have been a citizen for nine years before you run for the Senate and you must be a born U.S. citizen uh, in order to run for President of the United States, which some of the historians, as I think I mentioned before, uh, attribute to Thomas Jefferson trying to write Alexander Hamilton out of the presidential sweepstakes. In any event, um, I think that my colleagues should probably uh, relax with some of the hyperbole and exaggeration here. After all, all we're saying is let's keep doing what we've done since 1790 in the country. This is the way that the census and the reapportionment have always been run in the United States of America. And what they're proposing um, is obviously a radical departure from what the Constitution ordains. Lauren Boebert has to know all this, surely. But just wait, Representative Garrett Grays is about to step right into it. Mr. Speaker, I just, I wanna simply explain what we're talking about here. You could have a citizen of Russia that illegally crosses our southern border, pays cartels, comes across our southern border, and decides to set up shop in California. That citizen of Russia that can still vote for Vladimir Putin all day long also is counted in the distribution of electoral votes in the United States, therefore having influence, therefore shaping who is president of the United States. I, I, I don't know what else could possibly be foreign interference in elections than, than what we're talking about today. The reserves, the gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I'm delighted to hear someone on that side of the aisle denounce Vladimir Putin, and I thank him for his remarks. Uh, we should definitely avoid putting in a president of the United States who looks up to Vladimir Putin and calls him a genius. It's gross and intentionally misleading to argue that mass migration of all things is the way that foreign countries are hoping to influence elections. Now, a case can 100% be made about lobbying or influence peddling or certainly misinformation infiltrating and muddying the waters, but non-citizens can't even vote, let alone enter Congress or the Senate. As Raskin points out, the Republican Party are increasingly parroting Russian-esque talking points, and they seem far less concerned about potential foreign agents within their own party. As as has been the case since the first census in 1790, the more people that live in an area, regardless of their citizenship, the more seats that area will be apportioned. The Constitution requires that we count each person in our country, whether citizen or non-citizen, once, only once, and in the right place. It is entirely unambiguous. If your state contains more people, regardless of who those people are, you'll need more funding and more representation in order to make sure that everybody has what they need. The idea that sanctuary cities like benefit from taking in migrants is middle school logic at best. Like we bust these people out of our state because we're hateful and we wanted to please our base. And now you're getting these sweet extra appropriations? It's laughable. Requiring that a person be a citizen to count them as a resident is a wild enough idea, but add to that the fact that immigrants, both documented and undocumented, 
pay taxes to the states in which they live. It really throws a wrench in the Republicans' argument when you think about it. Undocumented immigrants contribute literally tens of billions of dollars in local, state, and federal taxes, despite being unable to access most of the benefits that U.S. citizens are entitled that those taxes fund. What Bober and her MAGA ghouls are proposing is taxation without even the most basic level of representation. Elon Musk and other right-wing monsters talk about immigration as though the left are encouraging people to cross the border illegally just so we can get those sweet votes. When undocumented people and legal permanent residents cannot and never have been able to vote. It's already illegal. The most ridiculous thing about this whole thing, though, is that a study by David J. Beer of the Cato Institute shows how red states disproportionately benefit most from non-citizens being included in the census. Immigration has it skewed in favor of Democrats for apportionment for literally decades, but their base doesn't care. As usual, we're not talking about a real policy debate. We're talking about politicians like Lauren Boebert using primal fears to stoke hate, division, and rage at any cost. And what they're proposing um, is obviously a radical departure from what the Constitution ordained. I will reserve. Thanks for watching our video. Did you know that you can support our show by becoming a subscriber? Just click the subscribe button and also ring the bell so that you get notifications when we're live or when we post new content.